Hi everyone. I just wanted to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Nate Gilmore. He's the Chief Revenue Officer for Panadoc, leading sales, marketing, and customer success. Panadoc, as you know, is a fast-growing B2B SaaS company providing the signature proposals and contract management software that helps more than 20,000 companies close deals faster. Prior to Panadoc, Nate was an EIR for startups, a leading global startup accelerator with investments in over 2,000 companies. Prior to that, Nate was a founding go-to-market VP of Shipwire, a SaaS provider of logistics to mid-market brands, which was sold in 2013 to, Inter in, in, to Ingram Micro. Uh, so Nate held a senior executive role there till 2017. Nate is also an active investor and advises a lot of companies. Uh, so hi, Nate. Uh, how is everything there? <laughs> everything is great. Everything is great. And I'm... Uh... I'm here calling you from Florida, so it's nice to it's nice to nice to meet everybody and nice to be on this uh, on this recording with you. Thank you. Yeah, great to have you here as well. So, do you want to start your slides? So. Sure, I will. Um, hopefully, you can see everything. If there's any problems, please uh, interrupt me. And I've also asked that you kind of ask as many questions so that we can keep this interactive. Yeah. Um, so, I, we I wanted to to um, to present and talk a little bit about like. Um, what we've been doing in our sales strategy, like once the, the COVID pandemic hit. Um, and so uh, we'll talk about three data, like data backed ways that we've adopted our sales strategy. And um, uh, PandaDoc um, is a document automation and proposal and contract management solution for, for predominantly revenue teams. So it's oftentimes it's we're salespeople talking to salespeople. And so we wanted to kind of talk a little bit about and and as you know, with all entrepreneurs and B2B, everybody's selling. So, um, so this is some things that we've done since the pandemic. So um, my role at Pantadoc is the chief revenue officer. So I oversee customer success, support, marketing, and sales. And so it's all the revenue functions. So, um, so as the pandemic hit, all of these were impacted. And so I wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that we predominantly did on our new business side. And we're not gonna talk necessarily about um, all of the things that we did in customer success or marketing during the pandemic. So we'll focus really on new business development and some of the impacts there, if that's okay. okay. So um, I always like to start with the end. And so at the end of this, you should walk away with three main things. First of all, find industries that are still growing. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we have a, we have a, Pandadoc's a great product. So one of our key findings is we want to get customers into the product faster, right? And so I think um, this has a, 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 a way to say this for, I think that is universal, which is how do you get customers or prospects to have an aha moment sooner, right? And so for us, it's about getting customers into the product faster. But as you read number two, what's your aha moment would be a good takeaway. And then the, the third is ABT is really the new ABC. And so we talk, we're going to talk about training um, and how important training is uh, and what some of the things is, some of the things are that we're doing in training. And um, so I'll jump into that in a second as well. So um, I'll just let you digest this slide for a quick second. Um, but um, so COVID hit, right? So what happened to our strategy? Um, the first thing we did was make sure our people were safe, right? And so as leaders and as, um, as, as individuals and humans, right? Like, so there was a lot of fear and uncertainty. People didn't know what was going on. A lot of people, kids out of school, um, uh, people navigating this new normal. Um, and then some of the things that happened in the business that we started to do is, um, when the pandemic hit, we, we kind of had to look at our, our sales strategy and where was this going to impact our business? And I must admit, I think I did three business plans in the course of, you know, six to eight weeks of like, okay, what, what happens here, here, and here? And, you know, which plan is like, is my current plan going out the window is like something else. And I'm, I'm sure that that's probably pretty consistent with most business leaders. It's like, what does this do? Um, but one of the things that we also did is, is, we started seeing the impact in our funnel. And it became pretty clear that we, um, that we were seeing new industries come in, predominantly around a couple of verticals. 
um, I'll talk about this, but the new verticals ended up being about 15% of our closed one in June and July. So the first thing that, that this is the big takeaway I would say is, is, and I think this is consistent at all times, which is listen to your sales funnel, right? Listen to the sales funnel. Um, the next thing we did, we did something a little bit bold. We launched a free product offering. We've been a free me, a free trial company, but we, became, we also launched an actual freemium product. Um, and we did that in order to um, help companies that were making the transition to digital. But we also did it because um, we were trying to expedite our, our, our e-sign go-to-market strategy. And so we did something, I would say that this was a pretty bold thing. And our CEO really championed this and it, he moved it really, really fast. Um, to date, that has generated tens of thousands of signups. Um, and we're still navigating, taking those companies from kind of free to pay or free to deeper next level value. And then the, the last thing is, um, you know, changes were happening as well. And so we were doing our best to kind of keep our keep a eye on kind of what's happening with our with our funnels and our processes with our team and so this was we're leaning into things and things like better, different lead routing and scoring and training and and all of this stuff kind of had to change and evolve and it still is and so this is something that's very very consistently happening um, so let's dig into one of these so i think that one of the the main themes um, for, uh, for all B2B sales is like, like if you hit a hiccup in your, in your revenue funnel, listen to your sales funnel and look for what industries are still growing. If you, um, if you follow the S ones and the, um, uh, and the, the, the analyst, briefings that a lot of large companies were doing at the end of Q1, one of the things that they were all announcing is we're seeing growth in these industries, right? These are the industries and we're pivoting some resources over to those industries. But I think that's consistent for every, every business. It's like you look across and you're like, my, my, my service is going to be available for these industries. Which ones are still growing? Which ones are in decline? So for us, we, we were finding growth larger than we expected in education and healthcare. So like dentist's office, emergency care, home health services were coming in. They needed a touchless tech, tech to execute patient forms and insurance docs and things like that. Um, and the other thing was healthcare. They, they didn't really have time to learn new tech, but they were also deeply concerned about patient confidentiality. So what we did is we, we started learning what is the pitch there? You know, what is the use case? And then we actually pivoted and made sure that we finished checking all the boxes to become HIPAA compliant so that we could remove one of their big barriers. And so from my role, um, what we did is we listened to the sales team saying, I can close more business over here, but I need this. And so it was a, a, a deep company listening that resulted in you know, marketing and product and tech and IT and engineering, everybody kind of going, okay, wait, we can get there faster. So let's figure out how to do that. And so we getting there faster became one of the themes in the first couple of months. But I think it's a theme that all businesses can be carrying at all times, especially if you're missing your number, right? So um, another piece of that was a uh, school district, school districts were going remote. So we, uh, we definitely uh, did a lot of work to pivot into healthcare and make sure that we check all those boxes as well. And so, and they had different needs around document automation. They're not necessarily our, our um, they weren't necessarily our core like sales proposals. They were really looking at like student registration and oil and enrollment and marketing materials, making sure that they could keep their processes moving. And so both of these for us meet a larger theme, which is the digitization of documentation, which we tend to live in. So, um, okay. So the next theme for us, it was getting the product um, into the hands of customers faster. Um, and so, I mean, the impact of COVID was, was just huge. And so, and we're seeing this longer term. So um, like for us in the US, these were like temporary closures into permanent closures of business. And I think we're seeing this globally as well. Like this is really big. 
This is a big industry wide or global wide um, thing that's happening. And so what we did as a company is we said, okay, look, we can take a sliver of our offering and we can push it out um, because most of these businesses are, they're cutting budgets and there's budgetary changes and things like that. And so we took a small sliver and said, we're going to push it out. We're going to get it into more people's hands and we're going to make budget not a problem. So we launched an unlimited docs and unlimited signing and unlimited users e-sign for upload and signing of documents. And so our core, we, we like e-sign for us is a piece of our overall puzzle with respect to um, workflows. And I think we'll talk about it later, but insights that you get once you send a document, you can see who's viewed it and um, approval paths and things like that and templates and being able to like auto generate stuff. And so we had, we have this value proposition above this. And so we took eSign and we said, well, we're gonna, we're gonna distribute that. And this gave us, um, this gave us a, a, a big pickup. The other thing we did is we also tried a new ways to make sure that customers could call us. So we removed any barriers that we had to talk to our sales team. We'd already had drift. We'd already had, um, contact us and we'd already or we're obviously doing a lot of email but we also our our vp of sales was like immediately started getting phone numbers up on the website and because he wanted to talk about prospects that were coming in faster that had immediate needs around this and so what did that actually do toll free became one of our fastest uh conversion funnels and so when i look at it i look at somebody coming in for a demo or a free trial or freemium and how long it takes them to get to a paid value. And toll free was actually incredibly short. They were talking to a qualified sales rep, they were on it, they had buyer momentum, they were doing we able to ask, or ask and answer questions really quick. And it'll move that those customers through pretty fast. So um, getting, we were able to get the customer talking to the right people to solution sell and to provide the solution and to answer questions and to be of service. And so if it's, get customers to see product faster. It's also get customers to service faster. Whatever service you're offering is, can you do that faster? Because they're moving, they, they're moving quick. And I think buyers even now are in a, a, a pace of movement. Uh, when they need to get something done, they need to get it done fast because oftentimes they're, they have a smaller amount of resources and things like that. So people are moving pretty quick right now and they're making decisions. Some of those decisions are moving up into more senior levels and some of them are actually moving down. So I think the big takeaway here is how do you get customers to see value, see solution, have that conversation or see the product faster? Perfect, yeah. So uh, you've also like, uh, when you went like you started this toll free numbers. So did you have to increase your team drastically to handle the calls? Uh... No, no, we didn't. Um, we, we filtered them across the team um, and they became a, a desired lead. Mm -hmm. So um, it was, I think it was, I think it's one of these themes of if you have, if you have an idea that you think is going to work, test it pretty quick. And then if the test works, roll it pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Right. And so one of the other things that we're talking about is also, um, and we're also doing more is, is because people are on the move and like, and once you have that phone number, we were also implementing texting more to try and get customers to do that. And we're going to continue to drive to this as the world obviously moves more to texting from email. So I don't have the numbers for that, but um, it's there. Um, so what's the third big takeaway? Um, we, we had, um, we, we as a company focused on activity. Um, and so um, we, we worked uh, to really look at um, like how our reps were responding to leads. Um, we implemented, we have these three pandas there. We tried to, to uh, get much clearer and simpler. We had a, a lead scoring number and things like that before, but then we, we replaced it and we said, look, this is an okay lead. This is a great lead. If you see three panda faces, get on it pretty quick, right? This is a top quality lead. And so the idea is these leads, we want activity on faster. 
and we started using activity and we started watching activity much more because we weren't in the offices together. And so data became really, really relevant for us then. And so we found a couple of like main activities, like three panda faces speed to lead and for us number of proposals sent. So we focused more of that. Now we're focusing on more dials and more personalization and things like that. Um, let's see here. I added this and that's ABT, always be training. Um, we as, a, as an organization did a couple of things with COVID because we all went remote. We did a lot more team check-ins um, and then those team check-ins started taking framework pretty quick. And the framework we got to is we tend to do one deep training a week and then we do a series of role play meetings as well. And so those role play meetings became um, two things for our team. The first was um, they became a, a chance to kind of just check in as a team and, and, um, and talk and, and see each other on Zoom um, and know that you're not working alone. And the other thing it did, it, it became a way to start increasing the training of our junior team because senior people were on there talking about how they would handle specific situations. So, and those role play trainings tend to be really unscripted. You can bring in a couple of recent deals, a couple of recent wins, a couple of recent losses, and be able to structure those role trainings really, really easily without a lot of prep. But we started to do that very consistently. Um, okay. So I guess this would be a good time to just ask, like, ask yourself, you know, um, in those new industries. So uh, ICP is ideal customer profile. Um, your ideal customer profile is that customer you've always been kind of closing. But what industries are outside of your ICP but still close that are still growing? And that would be like a good takeaway question, right? The second is around this free product and this theme there is how can you get value to customer faster, whether that value is product, conversation, solution, how can you get that to prospects faster? Um, because your customers are moving faster. We actually saw in COVID, we saw our deal cycle, um, or like our pre-COVID funnel was, uh, became very long. So deals that were in our funnel pre-COVID became pretty long. Deals that came in post COVID were about half, the, half the, uh, the, the time to close length. So as soon as they came in, because people were shopping, they were ready. They, if they had prioritized us already, they needed us to service them very quickly in order to, to make this happen. Um, and then the last is like, how do you drive more relevant activity and make sure that the team while they're remote and they're working at home and things like that, are taking the activities that you need to help you move your business forward and to find more customers. So yep. that's it. That's great. Uh, thank you, Nate, so much. Uh, so yeah. just wanted to uh, ask you a few quick questions. So mm -hmm. uh, see, Bob, I really like your point about internal training as well as how you need to bring your product or services or solutions faster to your customers. And uh, then as you said rightly, we've also noticed that there are certain ICPs which we were not focusing on, but we saw that it was moving really fast and we had to kind of attract them. And it's actually, the deal cycle has become faster for us as well, which is, which we did not even anticipate that uh, speed. Yeah. Uh, so that is something great. I uh, just wanted to get more information about your product as such in Paladoc, like the premium that you are offering, like so that our audience might you know, be wanting to try that as well. Yeah, please, please do. So just go to pandadoc.com and a free e-sign. It's actually a banner at the top when you hit the homepage. You find it really quick. It's also on our pricing page. Um, and it's free and unlimited. So you can add as many users as you need. And it's, uh, it's for, like, if you have a document, you can upload and you can get it signed digitally. That's good. And they're yeah. All legal. yeah, they're all legal digital signatures. So we've also predominantly been using Panadoc for, like, lot of time, I mean, almost like for two, three years now. And it's been one of the best uh, for us for making proposals. That's actually one of the first tools I got, uh, to be honest, because, uh, you know, you need to propose to somebody before you start using other tools, you know, so yeah. templates they have is like really good. And, you know, it's like really a lot of winning templates are there. Like we've been using a number of templates from them, but this e-sign and everything is kind of new to me. I've not, I've never thought about using Panadoc for contractual agreements till now. I've most 90% mm. of 
it is being used for uh, sales purposes. Uh, yeah. So there's time for you to prepare your content as well, right? In terms of the actual proposals and the words that go on to that. Yeah, so it's interesting. So the like the, the characteristic there of a proposal versus a contract. So what we what we find in in um, many uh, many, especially SaaS businesses, you know, and B two B businesses, is oftentimes the proposal is very similar, like consistently. So you use a proposal template. You're changing things. You're, you're modifying it to fit the needs of that particular customer to show them you're listening, and that th this is the pricing and this is customized. Um, and then typically after that, there is is it depends on the the service that you're offering. It's either usually a boilerplate or a pretty standard service agreement which PandaDoc is great for, very simple template to do it, or it's a, it's a more complex negotiated agreement. And so oftentimes those negotiated agreements, you might go back and forth. We have a system to handle that inside of PandaDoc, um, but oftentimes people will take that offline and then re-upload that mm -hmm. uh, for final signature so you can keep it in, in there if you want to. So it depends on how you operate, the size of your business, um, the size of your deals and how negotiated they are. Uh, tends to be whether or not it's a simple proposal for us, for Pandadoc. Um, we actually publish our MSA on our website, and then our proposal links to that MSA, so the proposal and the contract work together in one step. So once you sign the proposal, you're pretty much done. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, so thank you so much, Nate, for your time uh, for taking this time out. Uh, I would be sharing your slides with uh, our audience, and so I'll be sharing the link of Pandadoc, so anybody who wants to try it can. Uh, you know, definitely use it. And I'm sure your takeaways are like the takeaways you've given is like really good, especially in terms of also the, you know, especially that does the internal meeting part where you do role plays. I think that people need fun at this time because even now in many countries, people are still working remotely and, uh, you know, they have this problem of being left alone and the energy levels are not the same as it used to be for many people. Yeah. So I think activities like this would definitely keep them up and I think no, we'll also kind of grow and that empathy would be there to the audience as well, to the, to the internal resources before we show that to the external world. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so I'll also, I'll send you the slides um, and you'll also have these, these blog posts. So there's like, um, so there's a, a few things that we're offering now. Um, we have a benchmarking uh, portion of our website that allows you to input a couple of values about your company and see how you and your document workflows compare to somebody else on platform. So it literally aggregates all of our platform data and says, okay, here's what your business you're telling us it is. And here's what, here's what, you know, thousands of Pandadoc users that are similarly sized with a similar type of deal are going to, this is, a, this is what their document workflow looks like. And then we've got a couple of case studies here. And of course, um, if you're in the audience, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Sure then, so, yeah. Yep. These, uh, we'll make sure that you get these links. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, Nate, for your time. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.